wonder how your life would be different if you could be more creative. I recently read a study that said that employers, the number one thing that they are looking for when they are hiring is creativity. That was the answer that 80% of employers gave. My name is Rachel, and I am a creative recovery coach. So what that means is that I help teach people how to be more creative, how to live more expansively and joyfully, and how to master their own story and heal through storytelling. So I'm going to start by explaining to you guys why I am so passionate about storytelling, about self-expression, and about creativity. So all four of my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. My maternal grandparents went through Auschwitz. And my whole life, I always wondered about my grandparents. How were they able to go through these really extreme traumas? and still not only survive what they went through, but they were able to thrive. They were able to build beautiful lives, they were able to raise children, they uh, were functional members of society. And I always wondered about this. How were they able to move through the things that they went through? And I believe that much of the story lies, much of the answer lies in storytelling. So, my mother told me that when she was growing up, her, her parents, my grandparents, did not talk a lot about the Holocaust. They kind of left that trauma behind them. It wasn't something that was spoken about, and they really were very forward-facing and focused on survival, and they did not talk about their experiences of surviving the concentration camps. By the time I was growing up, that had changed completely. My grandparents told me their stories all the time. A lot of their stories were funny and interesting and sad, um, but I knew all about the Holocaust, I knew why my grandparents had tattoo numbers on their arm, and it was just something that they talked about all the time. And I think what changed between when my mother was growing up and when I was growing up was that in the 1960s there were a lot of people that came forward and wrote books about their Holocaust experiences. Probably the most famous person that did this was named Elie Wiesel. And in the 1950s, he wrote his book in Yiddish, and then in the 1960s, it was translated into English. And it was a very short book. He wrote a book called Night, and it's about 100 pages, and it's his memoir, his biography, of his experiences in the concentration camps. And Elie Wiesel, who happens to be my grandmother's first cousin, he won a Nobel Prize for this book. Now, they offered him the Nobel Prize in Peace, or the Nobel Prize in cannot win two Nobel Prizes, so he had to choose. And he chose to win the Nobel Prize in peace. Now, what's so fascinating about Elie Wiesel, and not just Elie Wiesel, but other storytellers, like Viktor Frankl and Primo Levi, people who told their Holocaust stories, when they told their stories, there were very few stories out there. And what they did was, by finding the courage to tell their story, to talk about what happened to them, they opened the doors and allowed other people to tell their stories as well. So I believe that by the time I was growing up as a young child in, North, in, a, in a major North American city, I got to learn about the Holocaust from my grandparents because they had found the courage and the words to articulate what had happened to them. Now, they, when they told me their stories, they were able to tell me their stories in an empowering way. So they didn't paint themselves as victims, they didn't talk about hatred or revenge or anger, they talked about triumph and survival, and how they were able to hold on to their beliefs and their values and, and carry it through and pass it on to us. So I really believe that when traumatic things happen to us, if we're able to master the art of telling our story, whatever that story is, and every single person has a unique story, you don't have to be a Holocaust survivor to have a story, every single person has a unique story, and when we learn how to tell that story, we can literally change our reality, because we get to choose what we want the story to be. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is what is creativity. So this all sounds real nice, Rachel. Thanks for all this stuff about storytelling, but I want to get practical. How do I use this in my life? What does this mean? So I want to talk to you guys about the definition that I use when I talk about creativity. So 
A lot of this comes from the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, and this is an amazing book about creativity. And in her book, Julia Cameron talks about creativity as a spiritual concept. Now, this might be a little woo or out there or a little spiritual. I am going to use the word God, but if that makes you uncomfortable or that's not a framework that's familiar to you, I encourage you to stay open-minded and replace whatever word is aligned with how you see the world. So she basically explains that creativity is a spiritual concept. We live in a world where creativity is everywhere. God is creative. God created the world. And she says that God wants us to be creative. God approves of creativity. God loves art. And one of the things that she says is, think of the way the world is constructed. Look around at snowflakes. Every single snowflake is different, is unique, is beautiful. Look at flowers. How many different types of flowers do we have? How many different varieties of pink flowers do we have? And when we think about the world in this way, we start to realize that look at all the colors and shapes and, and just the way nature is constructed. Creativity is emulating God or emulating the creator. And I like to think of God in this kind of fun and funny way, since I have small children. I think of him as a little girl or a little boy sitting on the floor with his tongue hanging out of his mouth making paper snowflakes. And of course this is just an analogy, but it helps us understand how creativity is something that we can all incorporate into our lives. Now, creativity is energy, right? It's disorganized. We can think of it almost like spiritual electricity. It lives in the world around us. It's totally disorganized. It's hard to channel. And I'm going to give you a practical tool to use so that you can take that creativity and you can channel it and you can focus it and you can turn on the tap when you need to turn on the tap and you want to be more creative. So the tool that is in this book is called Morning Pages. Now, Morning Pages is very simple. It basically involves sitting down every single day and writing three pages of stream of consciousness journaling in a notebook. Now, it's ideal to do it in the morning, but you don't have to do it in the morning. It's ideal to do three pages, but you can do less than three pages. The idea with morning pages is we walk around all day with thoughts cluttering our minds. We're thinking about the carpool and the grocery list and something that someone said to hurt our feelings and worries about the future. And because these thoughts are sitting in our mind and percolating, the creative, expansive, inspiring thoughts don't have a chance to move through us. So we sit down every day, we take those thoughts, we put them on the paper, and it's almost like clearing a pipe. There's a pipe and there's all this hair stuck in the pipe. I have three daughters, I'm always pulling hair out of the drain. We pull the gunk out, we throw it away, we leave it in the notebook, we put the notebook away, and now we have clarity, and we have peace, and inspiration can flow through us. And when you start to do the morning pages, you start to notice you're able to notice that you're more articulate. You're able to express yourself better. And there's all these amazing benefits that come with this very simple practice of sitting down every day and journaling in an uncensored way. So some of the benefits that start to happen when you do the morning pages is you start to just notice your thoughts are clearer. You're able to express yourself better. You have better word recall. You communicate better in relationships. You're able to express yourself better at work, in emails, it just starts to spill over into all areas of your life. So I wanted to share this tool with all of you. I hope that you find it helpful. I hope that it's something that you can bring with you, that you can make your own. And I hope that you all are able to take this tool and be able to live a more joyful, free, creative, expansive, and playful life. Rachel, you mentioned a few authors there at the beginning of the speech. Um, I don't remember the title of the book, but that, uh, I don't know how many books he wrote, but uh, Victor Frankl wrote a book that is one of the best books I have ever read. Has he written more than one? His most famous one is Man's Search for Meaning. Right. That's the one. That's his most famous that book. Is, that is it's a incredible. fabulous book. Yes, it is. Man's Search for Meaning.
Anyway, um, great speech, Rachel. Time to go. Was was uh, uh, Rachel's time, speech on time? She was in time. It was nine minutes and twenty seconds. Okay. Good. Great. Right. Right. <laughs> so now we are ready to move right into the evaluation session, and for that we will call upon Mari to evaluate Rachel's speech. Rachel, that was so wonderful. I loved all of it, and I have to somehow fill in two minutes of how much I loved your speech. But you did so many wonderful things. You, uh, you used the space really well, and your hand movements were so good. You looked around and made eye contact with everybody, which I thought was super effective. Um, there was also like head movement, so it wasn't just eyes. It didn't feel stiff at all. It felt um, like... Clearly, this is a story of self that you're you're sharing with us, and it just felt really authentic coming out and very confident. Um, so that was wonderful. Also, the tempo of it was very slow and steady. Um, you your tones um, went up and down to like um, highlight certain portions of what you were speaking about, which really caught our attention. And there were like pauses as well that like made us lean in a little bit more. Um, the story itself was amazing. Uh, you started it off with um, with your own history, with your family, um, and thank you so much for sharing that with us uh, in this space. And I loved how you then linked it to um, to like different experts. So you really set yourself up as like um, someone who's trusted, who's like bringing in all of these experts. That I'm like, okay, I need to write down who that is, and I didn't fully write all of it down, but I am going to read Man's Search for me. Um, yeah, so that, like, you built up your credibility. Um, I really 